Welcome everyone to this presentation about the postgraduate programs of translation and interpreting at Harriet Watts University. Uh, my name is Eloisa Montoliva Garcia and uh, I am the program director of the what we call the translation and interpreting uh, postgraduate programs family. I, I will tell you a little bit more about the programs uh, later but first of all I would like to um, present some facts about our campus and uh, the school, the department, so that you have a clear picture of where our programs live and what they are part of. Herbert University was founded almost 200 years ago and actually uh, we're about to start um, uh, some very important uh, celebrations in 2021 uh, and we would be delighted to to have you with us celebrating this important anniversary. As you can see uh, there are some pictures of the main entrance at uh, the Edinburgh campus where our translation and interpreting programs are taught and also some beautiful pictures of Edinburgh which um, I don't know if you if you know, but it's a festival city. The the month of August um, and also largely like July um, uh, is are, are the months of festivals. The Edinburgh um, International Festival, the Fringe, uh, the Book Festival, and, and many others. And there are always beautiful celebrations and fireworks uh, that you can see on the on the right. So we hope. You will join us to celebrate this important anniversary. Uh, as, as I said, the translation and interpreting programs are taught in Edinburgh, but uh, since uh, the university was founded, um, it has grown and it has become, become a global university, and now we have campuses in Dubai and Malaysia, as you can see in the pictures. And even though our translation and interpreting pr programs uh, are not taught in Dubai and Malaysia, there might be some optional courses, which I will present later, in which you will find yourselves sharing the, those courses with students from from the other um, uh, from Dubai and Malaysia as well, especially in the uh, courses that belong to the to the business um, department. Who are we? Um, we belong, our department is the Languages and Intercultural Studies Department, which this year is also celebrating a very important anniversary, our 50th um, anniversary. It was founded in 1970 and um, the current circumstances with the COVID-19 crisis have affected the, the celebrations that we were organizing that we will for sure celebrate this important anniversary um, at a later stage uh, and you will also be able to join us hopefully. Uh, we are part of the School of Social Sciences. This is school, as you can see at the top, this is school, brings together uh, the different disciplines that are considered social sciences. This includes psychology, business, and languages and by languages we we use languages to refer to the languages and intercultural studies department in the postgraduate um, uh, studies the, we, there are three different families our family the translation and interpreting family with a number of programs the culture and heritage family and the professional communication family all of them are part of our department and uh, we also have two research centers. Uh, our school and our department are very, um, very um, famous for uh, our research activity in both translation and interpreting and intercultural studies. Um, but also across the school, there is, um, there is uh, research going on in psychology, business, uh, finance accounting and all the related disciplines that, uh, that are part of the school and uh, these different disciplines are organized in research centers. Uh, what you're seeing just now is a picture of one of our interpreting labs uh, and this is part of our Henry Price building where most of our translation and interpreting courses take place 
We need dedicated labs and dedicated software to teach interpreting and translation. And as you can see, this is one of them. This is the smallest one. You can see the table with headsets um, uh, for the different students or the audience to listen to students who are interpreting in the booths and who are doing um, interpreting practice. And um, normally these booths are used for simultaneous interpreting which I will explain later, just in case someone is more of a translation person. Um, and, um, but in these same labs, we also do consecutive interpreting in which you speak outside um, in, front of, in front of an audience. We also have language labs for language specific courses. Um, we've got a sign language lab, um, a self-study lab that you can use at any time to, to do um, to work on your essays, to work on your on your different assignments. Uh, there's also a recording studio. And extremely important, um, we are a team, your teaching team. Uh, we are a team of, of experienced um, lecturers and we combine both the professional uh, expertise in translation and interpreting and academic um, expertise. So you will be taught by a combination of both. Sorry for the background noise. Um, this is happening from home in a lockdown situation, so I'm sorry about the, the background noise. And still inside our building, inside the department, this is another picture of um, another lab and a couple of our lecturers here. Uh, you can see a, a larger lab. This is the largest one with more booths and, uh, and uh, with an audience listening to the interpreters around the table. We have um, agreements and partnerships, collaboration agreements with different institutions and this um, tells you something about both uh, the quality of our programs and uh, uh, added the extra opportunities that will um, uh, happen to, uh, throughout the year for you to practice, to exchange, to learn beyond your courses. So we are part of the European Masters of Translation network, which brings together different translation um, uh, institutions, translation teaching institutions. And uh, this, uh, this, is, um, this creates opportunities to exchange resources, exchange practices. And the same applies to our collaboration with SKIC, the Director General for Interpretation at the European Commission. Uh, we've been collaborating with uh, SKIC for a number of years and uh, this takes the shape of virtual classes that um, uh, European um, um, EU interpreters uh, provide on-site pedag pedagogical assistance, so they visit us and run some lectures, observe our, our classes, run some workshops, study visits where we go to Brussels. Uh, it couldn't happen this year, unfortunately, due to the coronavirus crisis, but uh, fingers crossed we will hopefully be able to, to resume this kind of more face-to-face -face activity next year. And also the Academy of Trainers, myself and your um, teaching staff, we go to Brussels, we learn, we exchange from in, in, interpreters of the European Commission, we, we share experiences and strategies, and this all makes the, your experience and our experience um, much more comprehensive. As I said, we had to cancel a number of these um, activities, but we found ways of running them online. Okay, uh, we're also part of the Institute uh, of Linguists in the UK as official language partners. And we are also part of CUT, uh, which is also a conference, uh, a group, an association of um, universities and institutions that train translators and interpreters. And as you, I don't know if you can see in the picture, one of the latest uh, conferences took place in, in our campus in Edinburgh and, um, and it is also a, a really unique opportunity for us to find ways of excelling in both translation and interpreting, training and research. 
The nine programs that are part of what um, we call the translation interpreting family are um, group as you see at the bottom. Uh, we have the two programs that are two year long. Okay, so these are the only two that are two year long. This is the Chinese English um, interpreting and translating and the translating only programs. Why are these two two years long? These are two year long to give the opportunity to those students who at the time of doing the admission test um, are identified as students who might need some extra training to enhance their, their English, their academic English. And um, the, the, this gives them the chance to have a first year to focus on those skills and then a second year to follow uh, the, the course of studies as, as the rest of students, depending on whether they want to study both or only translation. There is a sign language interpreting program um, and the director is Svenja Worm. I have included it here so that you get the whole picture of the different translation and interpreting programs that we have. And then we have the three core programs, the peer interpreting master's degree, the interpreting and translating one, and the translating one. And then the, there are three other programs that combine translating with an element of business. Business, business with entrepreneurship, and translating with entrepreneurship. Those programs are taught um, jointly, so you will have some courses at the business um, department, some courses at the languages department. And um, um, I will explain a few more details about the different programs here. But before we continue, I've been talking about interpreting and translating. I'm sure you all know the difference that just in case uh, we we use interpreting at heard what to refer to oral to spoken translation um, in the different modes and translation or translating to refer to the written mo mode okay and just to give you an idea of the prospects the career opportunities some of our alumni we've got Rona here who worked as a freelance in-house translator. Now she's a freelance conference interpreter. She's based in Geneva. We've got Carly. She fell in love with audiovisual uh, translation and subtitling, and she has founded her own company. And she will probably come to visit us as she has been doing the, in the last couple of years to, to give a talk to, to our students and to give you lots of tips. Um, other graduates, we've got Ross, who is now an EU interpreter. He worked as an in-house and freelance translator, then did a, a master's focus on interpreting, and he became a SCIC, freelance interpreting, and then a staff inter uh, interpreter, sorry, and then a staff interpreter. Um, and then Sophie, who works as an in-house translator in Germany, she graduated in 2018. As you have probably noticed, and this is very common in our industry, now in our field, most of us, I did it myself, start working in either translation or interpreting or both as freelancers or in-house and we transition from one to the other and then we, we might opt for one, uh, one of them or for maybe for some of us, um, being an in-house translator works uh, better, or maybe we want to, to be adventurous or to focus on something. So these um, transitions are very common um, in, our, in our field. So don't be worried if you say, oh, do I need to choose now? No, don't, don't, don't worry, because our programs are also designed to give you some room to try different things. Um, and that is, that is actually one of, one of the, um, uh, the great things of our program is if you know what you want and you want to focus on one of them, interpreting and translation, you can do that, but you can also, you, you also have some room to play with optional courses. Um, each program, every, each of our programs has the same structure. So if you are a full-time student, um, you will have 180 credits and you will start it over a year. So from September to the end of August. And this is divided in three semesters. The first two focus on your courses, on teaching what we call taught courses. And the first semester from September to December, second semester from January to April, and you will have four courses per semester. Between 
the end of the exams period, so in May, you will have final exams. Between then and August, mid, normally around mid-August, you will focus on your master's dissertation, which I, I will tell you a few more things about uh, the dissertation later. And that is the third semester, which is dedicated uh, entirely to that dissertation. For part-time students, the same credit load, but over two years in, in, into the, instead of one year. Okay, so you will have, normally have two, two, um, and then two, two on year two, and then you will focus on your dissertation. To give you an example, for the peer interpreting program, you will have two mandatory courses and two optional courses on semester one, three mandatory courses and one optional course on semester two. Um, the first course that you can see listed on either semester, uh, those are really part one and part two of the same course where you will develop and acquire consecutive and simultaneous interpreting skills. Okay, so progressively more difficult with denser speeches, with longer speeches, um, and then you have two other specific courses for interpreting, Liaison and Public Service Interpreting on Semester 1, Liaison Interpreting for Business on Semester 2. And then on Semester 2, everyone in every translation and interpreting or translation or interpreting program will have to study the Translation and Interpreting Studies course, which is more to give you an, the uh, to provide you with all, with the different uh, knowledge of the discipline, the different theories, the evolution of the field, what's going on in research, so that you are part of, of that community that integrates both practice and lots of applied research uh, that actually has contributed uh, enormously to, to developments in our field. And you would have to complete those with optional courses. We move into optional courses, just in case to make it clear what we call simultaneous concept and uh, liaison interpreting. Simultaneous interpreting, this old picture, you might be, might be wondering why. Well, simultaneous interpreting emerged um, in, during the Nuremberg trials in 1945. Sadly, the history of interpreting and translation is very closely related to war and to work times and conflicts where some technologies were necessary in order to make communication possible, sometimes the sky. So there's a, there, there are lots of very interesting historical facts that, uh, that you will also learn about. So this is the first, um, one of the first pictures of simultaneous interpreting, very rudimentary equipment. But the idea is that if you will see the evolution, what it looks like today, You've probably seen pictures of different international organizations. There are booths, and you can see interpreters in the booth. There is an audience, there is someone speaking, and the interpreter is interpreting at the same time. So you listen, and then you interpret into the other language verbally as you are listening. Consecutive interpreting. Consecutive interpreting, the difference between sim simultaneous interpreting and consecutive interpreting is that in consecutive interpreting there isn't a booth, there isn't sophisticated equipment, um, but there is very important equipment. You need a notepad, you need a pen, you need to learn your note-taking technique, which is specific for interpreting, and you need excellent memory skills. Uh, so normally what you do is you listen to someone speaking for four minutes, maybe six minutes, maybe eight minutes, in a presentation or at a meeting, you take notes, you can use a notepad or you can use a tablet, which is becoming more and more common. And then you, um, when the speaker finishes, you start interpreting and everyone listens to you. Okay, so this, you have to wait until the speaker finishes their intervention and then you render it in, in the other language. Liaison interpreting is, is really a, a, a modality of consecutive interpreting. You wait, you listen and wait. The difference though is that normally it takes place in, in a situation where there is a dialogue, there is a conversation. The interpreter is between the two speakers. So here you can see a medical consultation. So the doctor, patient, 
and the interpreters in, in the middle interpreting in to both languages, okay, so both directions. Consecutive interpreting normally happens into one direction only. Liaison, you are the person who is making this dialogue, this conversation possible, medical practice, a medical consultation in business settings. Hence, we divide public service interpreting in police settings, social work settings, educational settings, and healthcare on semester two, and semester one, sorry, and business interpreting on semester two, uh, where you learn about the different aspects that are specific to this context, to this setting, but the modality is the same when you are between the two, okay, between two people or two parties. There might be more people, but normally two parties. It's also used in diplomatic interpreting uh, with politicians, you've, all, you've probably often seen one or two interpreters, sometimes they have one each, and, they, and you can see here the interpreter taking notes and enabling communication between the speakers. Okay, so communication is what brings us together, the interpreting modalities and the interpreting and translation program. Going back to the optional courses, as I said later, you will need to complete your optional courses to, to, in order to have your four required courses per semester with um, optional courses, these are the ones for semester one and these are the ones for semester two. So here you can see that there is a wide range of options, some courses about intercultural communication, about politics, which is crucial for our disciplines, international politics, business communication if you're interested, translation technologies, even if you're doing the the program in interpreting, you might be interested in doing some translation technologies. You can uh, uh, um, opt for cultural courses, festivals, global heritage, and also you can study language courses at beginners and post beginners level, okay, both, on both semester one and semester two. You can add a new language if you want or continue with one that you may, might have studied for some time, but for which you have a beginner level. Uh, on semester two, you have subtitling, localization, project management, and again, language courses. For the translating one, you have two mandatory in semester one, two mandatory courses in semester two. And again, this the first two are, uh, on either block are linked. Translation practice is as it's done. You will learn how to translate. You will be translating different types of texts and, and you will be doing this uh, in a specific class with a specific group with your language um, combination, okay? And then you have translation technologies, which I, I'll explain a bit more in a, in a minute. And again, translation and interpreting studies, and you will need to complete with option two optional courses per semester. So for instance, if you are really into translating, you could complete with subtitling and localization on semester two. Project management is also extremely important if you're considering maybe becoming a freelancer in the future. On semester one, you can give a go to liaison and public service interpreting or business communication, international projects, again, crucial for our programs, intercultural communication in the workplace, all that knowledge about intercultural issues that is so relevant for our discipline. And as I was saying, there are, these are the technolo technology components of the translation courses. Okay, so some of you might be familiar with, with this concept, some of you may not. Here at the top, you can see what is known as a CAT tool, Computer Assisted Translation Tool. These are, these have become uh, more and more sophisticated, and this makes translators' lives easier. What they do is they, they, they create translation memories of the different texts you translate, and so when you have a new text, uh, they recognize um, excerpts that you have, or terms that you have translated before, they make suggestions, so you can create an archive, a corpus of your translations, and the program detects similarities, and you can edit, you can add things, and also there are terminology management tools, so these this computer-assisted translation tools do not replace, they do not replace tra human translators, they make human translators' life easier. So this is, this is covered in the Translation Technologies course, among other technologies. In the localization course, uh, you will learn how to localize for instance, a website or computer games or any other website so that might involve not only translation, 
but also adaptation to different cultural, technical, legal, uh, legal requirements that, um, that are necessary to take into consideration to make that text, whether it is a website or a video game, to make it work for a particular target audience, local audience. So it's not a, a global translation that works in general, that works in general, but it's really adaptation. And this is also a course on semester two. And also on semester two is subtitling. Okay, so this um, shows a uh, wing cap, so the, the subtitling software that you will learn uh, how to use, and you will learn the different ins and outs of, of, of the subtitling process. For the mixed program, the combined program, you will have the core courses of the two that I um, presented earlier, plus the theoretical one, and you will have to complete again with the same range of courses. Now, um, apart from what I've said, or something important that I didn't say, um, the languages that you can study in our department um, in the master's programs are four, Chinese, French, German, and Spanish. And you might be a strand A student or a strand B student. The strand A student means that you're combining one of those languages with English, but working in both directions. From, for instance, from French into Spanish, from, no, sorry, from French into English and from English into French. What that, does that mean in, in the classroom? You will, will have, you will have some lecture sessions with all the other students who study interpreting of any language combination, for instance, learn note taking. But then you will have your specific seminars, practice seminars for your two language directions. In the example that I gave for strand A, you will have a class to learn how to translate, for instance, from French into English, and a different class with, to learn how to translate from English into French. Each class will be taught by a lecturer who is a native speaker of the language you are translating into or interpreting into. Okay? Uh, if you're a strand B student, you will have two languages of those four, Chinese, French, German or Spanish, and you will work from either language into English. So, for instance, you can have German into English and um, Chinese into English. Okay? And those will be your combinations. Apart from the courses, the classes themselves that I, that I mentioned, we organize different events, uh, the virtual classes that I mentioned earlier, visits, but also languages career events so that you can hear from agencies, from professionals, from um, our graduates uh, about different options and opportunities, about their experiences, and we organize this event um, every every year and we keep you updated about different opportunities. You can see here at the bottom Fanny Shuk, who is uh, one of the French lecturers and she is also the careers office officer. So she keeps you informed about any opportunities, volunteering, professional opportunities, career events that come up. We also organize a multilingual debate for interpreting students on semester two where you have a real audience. So you can see here some booths where you will be interpreting in pairs with a partner and we invite different uh, guests. Um, and we, we invite uh, ambassadors, the consuls, uh, some of our lecturers also deliver speeches and you will be interpreting in the booth and you have a real audience. Um, and this audience is made up of students from schools from across Scotland. Okay. Uh, so this is the, what we call situated learning. You are learning by practicing uh, what you are supposed to be doing when you finish. And this is one of the best uh, examples and, and one that we are really, really excited about and, and proud of. Uh, we also organize, as I mentioned earlier, virtual classes. You can see some pictures here of a virtual class, so link it with Brussels through video conference, uh, we have a virtual class and uh, we have visits to Russell so you can do dummy booths so mock interpreting in the booth, we, we have guest um, speakers to talk about translation of interpreting different aspects and, um, and that's 
um, uh, I'm running out of time, so that's uh, an overview of, of what it is like to study with us in our translation and interpreting programs. You can see here the different links to our blog, uh, um, uh, our Twitter hashtags and accounts. You can follow us, you can follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, different uh, social media, and, uh, and you can, of course, you can contact us. You can contact me, you have my contact details here, not the phone, the office phone right now because I'm working from home, but please feel free to email me if you have any questions, uh, if you would like to have a meeting, if you have, uh, we can we can have a Skype meeting if you have something that you would really like to discuss. Uh, also, we're at missions office, study with us at heritwat.uk. Uh, you can contact them for any administrative questions, questions about the admissions procedure, but please do so. We are here and we will be happy to answer all those questions that you might think, hey, should I be asking, should I be contacting? Yes, do, do not hesitate. Uh, we, would, we would love to hear from you, whether you are thinking about applying, whether you have applied and received an offer, whether you know that you will be coming, uh, contact us at any time. And uh, my some final words about the current situation. You might be wondering what's going to happen with the COVID crisis. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what has happened uh, since uh, roughly mid-March. We had to stop teaching on campus and we had to transition to providing online support. All of us working from home, students studying from home, and uh, so we would have we have we continued with. Uh, lectures with online support, online classes, and we have delivered the exams online as well. Um, we don't know what will happen in September, but the programs will begin. What does it does this mean? Uh, we are planning different uh, scenarios depending on how the situation evolves. The programs will begin for sure, but they might begin in a blended learning learning um, format or in an online format. Um, we are not sure that uh, the campus will be ready to to be working and to and for us to be back physically in September. Again, it will depend. If it, if that is not possible, do not worry because we will de deliver the programs online. Okay, so this will require some learning, some webinars to have to learn to to uh, to use the technologies, but the programs will begin in September as planned. And then, depending on how the situation evolves, maybe semester two can move, hopefully, move to face-to-face -to -face on campus learning. But it, this is an uncertain uh, situation. And we are doing everything we can to adapt. We have uh, platforms, we have software in place to make teaching and learning possible, of translation, of interpreting. And, and we, will, we will have a plan in place um, for for any any um, situation that is that is required and to adapt and adjust to to make it possible for the programs to to happen. Okay, so this is this is everything. Please contact me if you have any questions, and and please join us in in any forthcoming webinars um, in the in the future. Or again, contact me. Do not hesitate. And thank you for listening. Stay safe.